part 13. The final part. There's only 20 minutes of uh, runtime left, but I'm assuming this is going to be a long video. Because there are a lot of small t details that go into uh, this final stretch of the run. It's very complicated. So, starting after Hashmal, you want to Im immediately dispel Redas. And then you want to bring Redas to critical HP. This is assuming you are not saving before uh, SID 2. Yeah, you want to, if Redas is on full HP, the best way to uh, crit him down is by using arrow. Unfortunately, I'm not, if you, if you, if Redas was dead and you Phoenix down Redas, then the best way is to use an arrow on Redas later with uh, Vaughn. But Spellbreaker, uh, Cherry Staff, Ash is almost enough to it it sometimes it's a damage roll. Sometimes it brings Redas to critical HP, and sometimes it does that. But in this case as well, you can uh, use Vaughn's arrow to finish finish the finish off the um what's it called finish off the critting. And then you also want to you want to protect and decoy Vash, but do you have a cutscene here? So. After this cutscene, uh, the protect and decoy on Bosch should be done. And not on Ash, but Bosch. And then you want to Berserk Redas. And as soon as Bosch gets untargeted, uh, you want to uh, take Vaughn into your party and replace Bosch with Vaughn. And you, you, do, you put Vaughn first into your party so that Vaughn becomes your party leader and spawns where Bosch was because Ash and Penelo are currently falling behind due to them casting spells. So yeah, then you cast Arrow on Arrow on Redas and have Ash reflect himself. Uh, the Arrow is just so that uh, you can get Redas to critical HP. Uh, so Ash reflected him herself and you want Penelo to reflect uh, herself and Ash will decoy Vaughn and Vaughn can reflect uh, himself. And then you turn on the gambits that should be on Fyraga. So switch the gambits to you should you're supposed to switch the gambits to Fyraga when you bring in Vaughn. And they are also supposed to be equipping flame staves. I will have to do another menu before Gebrandt. Also, if you weren't able to afford HP plus 500 or Dispel on Bosch, uh, license those and, uh, and reflect for Fran. Although the Reflect for Fran license, that can be skipped if you have a Reflect, if you have a Reflect Gamote remaining. But anyway, uh, Gabrant is a two-phase fight. Uh, first phase, it doesn't matter that Redas is not reflected. Uh, Redas will run out, run out of range of Fyraga. Uh, so Redas will run to hit Gabrant. And Ash and Penelo will be casting Fyragas. Redas is in critical because he has Adrenaline, which doubles his um, strength, doubles his uh, physical damage, just like Spellbreaker doubles Ash and Penelo's uh, magic attacks when um, when they are in critical. And it also makes Redas' combos longer. But yeah, you do one round and that's usually enough. Um, there are a couple of things though. You can see Gabrand was casting Protect. Sometimes that pro Protect will um, will beat one of the Fyragas. So, and then uh, the fight will take a little bit longer. And then Gabrand will start running towards Swan. 
Uh, also, Gabrand can block magics. Uh, so sometimes he can block too many magics, and then also he will come after Vaan. If he does, then immediate. If he starts moving towards Vaan, immediately uh, start running uh, away with Vaan, hoping that uh, Ash and Penelo will kill, kill Gabrand before Gabrand gets a hit off. The reason we're using Vaan here is this cutscene. And this cutscene will be longer if Bosch is in your party. Because this cutscene is like about Gabrand taunting Bosch. And then if Bosch is in your party, Bosch will answer and then Gabrand will talk back and it's like 20 seconds longer cutscene. But here at the second phase, uh, if you want to definitely do this on active, or sorry, on wait. Um, but at the start of the second phase, Gabrand will always use guilt. And the problem with second phase is that uh, Gabrand will get immunity to magic. So the only one dealing damage is Redas. And so we can't deal any damage to him other than uh, Redas at Berserk and uh, low HP, which is why it's very important that Redas is in critical HP. So he can deal enough damage. Anyway, uh, guilt will happen immediately. Guilt is an FMV attack. It's a single target. It will target one because one is decoyed. Uh, but you can you can clog it. You can clog the ATB by throwing a potion, and you can throw a potion at uh, Bosch. That's why you want to have your potion, or you want to have your your cursor on X potion for this. So you can throw the explosion on on Bosch to heal Bosch to Bosch to full health uh, while 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 blocking guilt. So you will see that guilt will not will not happen until the explosion gets out of the action. And also while waiting for the guilt to happen, you can tell one of the girls to reflect Redas. And then Vaan should well I don't know. I don't know if one should move here or not, but anyway, one will die to guilt. Sometimes I think guilt can miss, uh, which is cool. But uh, then, yep, then one will die to Gabrand's. Or oh, sorry, you can block guilt, but um, one doesn't have the ability to do that right now. So uh, one will just die to the guilt, and that's the that's planned. And then you uh bringing Bosch instead of Vaughn. And equip Bosch's mirror mail back on. Which is very important. Uh, then you run run to around here so that you are far away from both both Redas and the girls. And uh, Gabrand will target Bosch as as planned. And you can throw X potions to clock things like Circle of Judgment. Uh, Circle of Judgment is AoE will hit everyone around Bosch. So if you see Circle of Judgment, make sure that Bosch is far far enough away from both Ash and Penelo and Redas. And uh, in this case, uh, Redas got a combo and killed Gabrand before Cir Circle of Judgment happened. He can also use Sentence that can be clogged. Uh, both Sentence and Circle of Judgment require full 8 uh, effect capacity to happen. So that was Gabrand. Um, at this after this point in every fight, when you re if you recover, you need to make sure that uh, or the number one priority usually well in some of the fights Recovery is easier than others. Those fights would be Gabrand. Um, the first phase of Sid 1. And a regular Wayne fight. In those three fights, if you recover, the most important thing is that when you finish with that section, you are, in, you are back into full fighting fighting uh, condition. So do not leave those three 
um fights before you are you are back uh fully in a, in a full in full battle shape again so girls need to be back in ref, back in critical reflected bosch needs to have decoy back on a uh, fresh decoy for that matter um Redas needs to be reflected and alive uh bosch needs to have protect on or well bosch doesn't need to have protect on but it's recommended that you recast protect if bosch dies um so definitely do everything from now on on atb weight uh, so you want to start by throwing a, throwing an expo potion on redas and that is because um sit one after a certain amount of hp has gone uh he will use a move called gatling gun which hits everyone not just it's AoE, but the AoE is so huge that it will hit everyone. Um, and that that's something you definitely don't want to happen. So the plan is to kill him before that before he can get that off. And then a big element to this sit fight are these pillars. And you can go behind the pillar so that you can like have sit target you. And then go behind the pillar so you, he can't shoot you. And he will, walks pretty slowly so you can just kite, be, kite around the pillar so he can never get a shot off. Uh, that's just a big element that's gonna be done. So the first first part is that you with Bosch you need to run towards this direction. You start by throwing an X potion on Redas so that Redas doesn't over damage um, Sid. And then you dispel dispel with Bosch. So if Bosch doesn't have dispel yet, license dispel on Bosch. And also uh, license if if you have the if you do have the Ensanguine Shield, now would be the time to license uh, this license and this license and this license is the Ensanguine Shield. Uh, Ensanguine Shield is a shield that gives you uh, 90 evasion, which means that every enemy that's blockable. Uh, you, you have a 90% chance of blocking their attacks. And if that 90% fails, you have another additional 5% of chance of blocking the... Uh, of blocking uh, that uh, attack but with the shield block that we got earlier, but that's fairly irrelevant. Either way... Uh, you also want to uh, license the reflect if you don't have the reflect gamma mode. If you have the reflect gamma mode, then that license is not needed. But in either way, you want to dispel. Uh, you want to dispel Sid because he has shell, and then once dispel is around half charged, then you can tell Penel to cast cast oil on uh, Sid. I guess I didn't never mention what oil does. Oil oil triples fire damage, and since we're using fire aga, uh, that's a thing. Uh, that's a very nice thing to use. But either way, Sid will shoot you twice, and uh, after the second shot, let let uh, Sid target you again, and then run run behind the pillar. You need to turn off Ash and Penelo's gambits so that they run towards you. Uh, in in the Gabrand fight, you wanted to have the gambits on so that they stay still and don't follow you. Uh, so that they are out of circle of judgment race range. But here you want to turn the gambits off at first so that they come near Bosch so you can get more reflects out of the uh, Fyragas. Once they are around here, then you can turn on their gambits. And if they arrive at, the, at a different time, like say Ash arrives first, uh, then turn on Ash's Gambit and w and wait until Penelo gets here here as well until you turn on Penelo's Gambit. Uh, throw an X potion if necessary, and at this point all the X potions you use in fights should be ATB reset, and that is just remove the or remove the uh, weapon and re-equip the weapon. But here actually 
in, in this particular um, moment, it's not a, it's not necessary to re-equip the uh, weapon because um, we will be removing other piece of Bashi's equipment shortly anyway. But with Firag, with Firag and Oil, Sid one, the first phase of Sid goes very fast, and just keep keep moving so that the pillar is between Sid and you. And then that phase ends when you reach half half of Sid, Sid's, Sid's HP. So then Sid summons Famfrit and becomes immune to damage. And now this is the most dangerous part of this uh, this fight. Because there are two bosses, one of which can crit you and one of the, which, which can uh, combo you. And if Sid crits and Famfrit combos at the same time, Bash dies. So, uh, about Famfrit. Famfrit um, is weak to fire. So, Fire Aga deals a lot of damage and you can actually hit the damage cap with Fire Aga without oil. But Sid has a chance of casting Shell on Famfrit. So Famfrit starts with Shell and without with Shell you do, will not be hitting the, hitting the damage cap. And uh, Sid has a chance of casting Shell on Famfrit. So there are two different versions of the fight. A uh, fight where you cast oil on Famfrit and fight where you don't cast oil on Femfrit. And I I I'm pretty much the only runner who does not cast oil on Femfrit. So that's what you will see here. But I will also mention the oil strats. Either way, uh you start by uh, uh the advantage the advantage of um the adv advantage of oil less threats is that you don't have to have Bosch to do anything in this at the start of the fight. So you don't have to remove Bosch's armor immediately. Instead, what I do is, well, in both cases, turn off Penelope's gambits. But uh, what you do is you have Penelo dispel Famfrit and you have Ash decoy uh, Bosch. If you were to use oil, you would have Bosch dispel Famfrit and then uh, Penelo oil uh, Famfrit. Or you can have Penelo cast oil on, oil on yourself, in which case it reflects onto Famfrit. And the advantage of that is that oil has only 96% a 96% chance of landing on Famfrit. So uh, there's a 4% chance of it missing if, uh, if you have the same stats as I do. So if you if you want to avoid that 4% then uh use the oil on yourself instead of uh, straight up casting it on Famfrit or do what I do and don't even bother with the oil. So yeah. Dispel decoy and possibly oil. And if you do do it this way or if you do it the other way, you have to remove a uh, mirror mail before you start using dispel. But if you do it this way, uh, you can wait until the decoy is a little bit charged and then you can remove mirror mail. And as soon as you see action on decoy, that's when you uh, that's when you can go to the menu and re-equip the and optimize Bosch. Again, Sid is using guns, so it doesn't matter what armor you have against Sid. But um, uh, Famfrit will deal a lot of damage if you don't have the mirror mail on. Also, if you have the Ensanguined Shield, now would be the time to equip it so that you can block all of Buffy or all of Famfrit's attacks, or ninety percent of the of Famfrit's attacks. So. At this point, after every bit of damage you take, you use an X potion, and you use Ash. To ha Ash needs to use Fire Aga, and this is imp now is important uh, that only two of the Fire Agas hit Famfrit. So you need to count one, two. After two hits, 
you go to the menu and ATB reset Ash. And that is because uh, two hits is not enough to bring uh, Bamfrit to critical HP or to uh, below 80% HP. And below 80%, uh, Bamfrit will use Briny Cannonade. And the strategy is to uh, first first uh, get to Uh, for, first, you uh, bring Fanfrit to almost 80%, and then you kill him with two rounds. Uh, two rounds of Fire Aga. And the problem... Uh, oh yeah, you can uh, ATB reset both Ash and Bosch at the same time. And you can, even with the Ensanguined Shield, you can't block Sid's attack, so you should still be expositioning. But after the two hits, you ATB a reset and turn on Ash and Penelope's Gambits. Uh, so that they're both... They are, they're, they're, it's very important that their Fire Agas are at least almost synced like this. And yeah, keep, keep throwing explosions on Bosch. And then... Uh, there's one impor important thing in this fight, which I will probably mention pretty soon. Uh, okay, I will mention it here, because it doesn't seem like Sid is doing anything. But uh, Sid has a chance of, as I mentioned earlier, Sid has a chance of casting Shell on Famfrit. And if... Uh, let's go back a little bit. You have to pay attention to Sid casting uh, Shell. So, if by about this point, you have seen Sid, Sid cast Shell, like uh, Sid begins ch casting Shell on Famfrit. Or, well, it, it will not say on Famfrit, but it will be on Famfrit. He will not cast Shell on himself. But if you see that he is ca he's starting to cast Shell, you need to not uh, have Ash and Penelo uh, casting their Fire Agas, but instead you need to uh, re restart casting Dispel on Fanfrit with Penelo. And you just have to tank attacks with Bosch until you have uh, gotten the Dispel off. And using Explosions. Another important thing is that Red Assist Berserk must wear off before uh, before this point, otherwise he might go and uh, try to hit Sid, and then reflects from uh, Reda or Fire Agas that reflect from Redas would hit Sid instead of uh, Fanfrit, and that's really bad because you need all eight Fire Agas to hit on Sid, hit on Fanfrit, uh, to kill Fanfrit. Also, uh, that's the reason why you berserk. Berserk is one of the first things you do at the setup. Like you do it at the you do you need to do it before the save crystal, before you pass the save crystal basically. In the setup. But yeah, uh, if if there's no shell, then you just uh, then you just uh, continue the fight like this. But uh, there's also Sid can also troll you by using shell again after you dispel so if that happens but after after you get this uh this second round of fire Agas off if sid starts using shell after this then it doesn't matter you will get enough damage anyway but anyway uh after this round starts uh you will see that femfrit will already briny cannonade when you once you see that message uh go to your equipment and uh, equip Viking Coat on Bosch because that will give you immunity to water and Briny Cannonade is a water elemental spell. But you have to remember and also queue up an X potion so you will heal. So this was very close to dying by the way. Either way you will once you see the immune and you have healed so you see the potion um Potion heal and the word immune. Uh, that's when you can. That's when you have to go back to the menu and put the, the mirror mail back on. 
And you need to put it back on uh, before the Briny Cannonade animation finishes. Or before either Briny Cannonade or Explosion uh, animation finishes. You are safe as long as they are both on, but once one of them uh, finishes, then uh, the mirror mail has to be on. So, but yeah, you can just, whenever you see the heal and the immunity, then you can, uh, that's when you you should uh, just optimize Bosch to put the mirror mail back on. And then, here you can see that Sid begins casting Protect. Protect doesn't matter, the only thing that matters is Shell. Uh, but if if you if you got the same text for shell then in the in earlier in the fight then you would have to do it, but here it's important that you need to get the second round of fire ragas off before uh, water cha happens because that's how the fight goes. It's briny cannonade and then water cha. So uh, so to recap, you hit. Two Fire Aga hits from Ash. And then two full rounds of Fire Aga. And that, sh that kills Spot from Frit. And make sure all of them hit and watch out for Shell. If you, ha if you use Oil, then you don't have to worry about Shell. That's the advantage of uh, using Oil. And the disadvantage was that then you have to dispel with Bosch and... Uh, it costs a little bit of time to cast the oil. Either way, Pamphrit goes down. Uh, you should turn off gambits. Uh, if everyone is untargeted, take everyone out of the party. Sometimes Bosch is targeted, and in that case, Bosch will shoot Bosch once. Uh, so what you do is uh, you wait for the animation you wait for the sound for the Sid to start shooting you at you, and then you have Ash or Penelo throw an X potion on Bosch, and then you take everyone out of the par then you take everyone out of the party, starting from the ladies, because well, uh, Bosch will need to get untargeted as well. But uh, just you need to you need to get take the girls out of the party because they are targeting Bosch as well. Uh, so don't 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 wait for the name to turn white in uh in in the outside of the menu so you you just need to take to take everyone out of the party and then if if Bosch is still targeted then by Sid then you just have to wait for uh, him to get untargeted but anyway you bring out Balfir uh Sid will always use Cyclotrone here uh he, as i said he might shoot you first but uh, after that he will use Cyclotron. And what you want to do is you want to cast, cast Blizzard on yourself. So Sid will target Balfir. And Balfir will kill himself. And then... Uh, Sid will... Uh, Sid will just skip Cyclotron. And Cyclotron is an FMV attack, which is why we want to skip it. So here... Uh, the rest of this fight is really cool. Uh, Bosch will get targeted, and Sid will, sh and Bosch will use dispel on Bo dispel on Sid. And Pe again, you have to wait until dispel is at least halfway charged before you tell Penelope to cast oil. Then uh, after dispel, after dispel gets in action, you can start holding your uh, analog stick to the r to the right. So that uh, Bosch can run away. Uh, so that Bosch can run behind the pillar. And this is the pillar cutting, the real pillar cutting section. So after, after uh, you need to make sure that Redas is uh, close enough and still has reflect on. And after that, after Redas is close enough, you can turn on one of the girls' gambits. So. Turn them on, make sure that uh, everyone is in range, including Redas. And once that Fireaga goes into action, you turn on the other girls' gambits. 
and uh, that is to make sure that you get fire at uh, that Penelos Fireaga or whoever you turned gambits, whosoever gambits you turned on first, uh, get uh, Fireaga will hit off of all four party members, and that is because in this phase, Sid, uh, Sid has return damage. Which means that all damage you deal, you will take you will take five percent of it back to yourself. So because they are at so low HP, they will die immediately. So so you can see here, Penelope's Fireaga, and he dies in or she dies immediately, but it will also reflect off of Ash before Ash dies, and then Ash will do it again, do it as well, and Ash will die as well, and. Uh, but you just have enough damage to kill Sid. Alternatively, uh, you can throw X potions on both of the girls to make sure that they don't die. Uh, that's just a little bit slower, and you, if you do that, you probably also want to uh, recast Decoy on Bosch. And that is Sid 2. It took me half an hour to explain Sid 2. And six and it only took six minutes of the runtime. So yeah, Sid 2 is a little bit complicated. <laughs> so now there's only final bosses left in the run. Um at the end, close to the end of Pharos, you want to pay attention to how many X potions and Phoenix Downs you have left. Um, I would say have at least 10 X potions for the final bosses. Uh, if you have more than 10, you should be fine. Um, but I would recommend getting more uh explosions if you are if you are um new to the run like i would say 10 phoenix downs and 10 explosions should be fine for the final bosses but i would recommend getting at least 15 explosions if you are um uh, new to the run and if you have to shop might as well use all your money because this is the final shop, so you're not gonna use any money after this point. And all you're gonna buy is, is X potions and Phoenix Downs. There's literally nothing else you, you need in the final fights. Except maybe a remedy. Maybe. But I I would not bother with remedy. You should you probably have a at least one remedy left over. But yeah, you can. Uh, you can um. Uh, you can sell all the loot you got from brain pants, if you need w well, for money. And uh, if you really need money, even after that, you can sell Bashi's golden amulet. So those should give you at least some expotions. So typically what I do, if I do that shop, I sell, I sell the loot I get from, uh, I sell the quality stones I get from, uh, I get from brain pants. I only sell the quality stones they sell for quite a bit and that usually gives me enough money. So uh, here you need to stroll again. Uh, last time when we went to Ridorana, you would just press right once to reach that, um, to go from Balfonheim. Here you have to press left, down, left, down, or left, down, left, left, or sorry. Sorry, no. Uh, down left, down left, or down left, down down. 
either one gets you to Bahamut. And then there are some cutscene skips. Also, you want to do a menu before you leave. Uh, if you want, if you want to save, you want to save in the aerodrome. And if you want to do a menu, you want to do it before you uh, leave. And in that menu, you want to remove Ash and Penelope from your party and put your battle speed to slowest. I forgot to do that, but I will do that uh, right at the start of uh, Pharos or Bahamut. So this black screen is really long one. And you want if you go this far, you need to turn off the gambits to take the girls out of the party. And yeah, and then you want to flee. But the reason again why you turn your battle speed to slowest is so that if any of these enemies knock back you, then. Uh, you won't get hit by all of the other enemies, because then Bosch probably dies. And once you reach the screen, there's another cutscene skip. And then there's an awkward camera angle. So final bosses consist of uh, four fights. There's Gabrant, Wayne, Vayne Novus, and the Undying. All of them are dangerous. Some more dangerous than the other others. Uh, Gabrant is probably the easiest, but it's still not free if you uh, if you don't know what you're doing. So once you reach this this scene, it's time to do the final sh setup. So you want to turn, take Ash and Penelope into your party, battle speed to fastest again, and remove, uh, you can do this crit down two ways. You can either remove Penelope's staff or you can remove Penelope's uh, armor. I would say that if you, if you are on level 28 and got all the magic lores, including the one that costs 120 LP, uh, then you want to remove the habit. But if you if you don't, uh, if you are level 27 or uh, didn't didn't get that last magic lore, then uh, remove the staff. Uh, the staff, without staff, you deal more damage and uh, you might kill people, but without the uh, habit, you might under damage, so... Also, you want to equip the check boots, but I typic typically don't equip them in this menu. But here you want to uh, fire a Ash with Penelo and then turn on their gambits. And as soon as uh, Fyra hits both of them, you want to ADB reset Penelo by, or you want to optimize Penelo to equip the flame staff. You also want to optimize Bosch, which I didn't do for some reason. And then you wait for them to reflect, reflect themselves, and then you touch the elevator. And then the fight starts. That's the setup for, uh, for setup for Gabrant. So the first phase is simple. It's a damage roll that almost never works in our in our favor. Uh, but what you can do is you can have Bosch cast Traveler on uh, Gabrant to, and that should do the trick uh, for killing. But what you do, you want to run a forward a little bit um, and then make like a circle, a clockwise circle around the girls and then run like that way. And you things you want to watch out is you want to make sure that Bosch is not too far away from Gabrant so that you get reflex out of Bosch to Gabrant. And I, I, 
I failed this a little bit because I'm Gabrand is supposed to like follow me around the girls from that side, but I went I did the circle a little bit too fast and then Gabrand just took a shortcut over there and got an attack off. But then the traveler was enough to kill him anyway before he got another attack off. So now the second part and that's um there's this cutscene. Again, this cutscene would be shorter as well with Bosch, but this isn't too much longer. And, uh, or with without Bosch, this would be faster, but it's not too much longer with Bosch. So, uh, I think it's better to just do this fight with Bosch because any other character would probably die of one or one hit from Gabrand. So, immediately after the cutscene ends, uh, Open the battle menu. And you must be on ATB wait for this. So what you need to do is you need to tell... Uh, you, you just mash X, so that's why I, went, I go to Traveler, because my cursor is there. You have to be sure that you don't press X too many times, or otherwise you will get out of the battle menu and this will not work. But you will have to press X enough times that you for sure open the menu. And then, if, if you want to be uh, safe, you can switch your cursor to gambits, because then you will just be turning gambits on and off uh, when you're mashing. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to uh, cast Reflect with Ash on herself. And you Reflect Reflect on Gabrand, so Gabrand will get reflected and renew, her, renew will reflect on Bosch. I will say that again. So, uh, Ash will reflect herself, and that reflect because Ash has reflect. That reflect will reflect from Ash to Gabrand, so Gabrand will get reflected, and that is important because Gabrand is about to cast Renew, which would heal him to full, and that way that Renew will get uh, reflected onto Bosch, and. Uh, and uh, Bosch will get healed and he will not, and you can kill him without before his next big move. And why Ash is not casting it straight on Gabrand is that if you target Gabrand, Ash might start walking backwards, and then she might be out of a uh, reflect range, or she might be too far away from Penelo, or something something like that might happen. So that's why you tell uh, her to cast reflect on him on herself. Now an important thing is. That if something happened at the first phase, and Penelo is not casting Fireaga, um, you need to get uh, at least five uh, things that cost at least five uh, effect uh, capacity. Uh, combined, so Fireaga is four and Reflect is one, so that's good enough. But if Penelo was not casting Fireaga, you would have you could have Bosch throw X Potion, for example, and that would work. So X Potion and Reflect would work. Either way, you have to have dot. You have to have uh five five slots in use in order to clog Renew, and that way, uh, Gabrand will get Reflect reflected before he can get renew off and then it's just gambits on and win although this is a damage roll especially if you don't have all the magic lores um, if if you don't kill like what happens here uh you need to have bosh run away because um uh, because this move is aoe so you have to run away from the girls so that they don't get hit. And as you can see, it deals a lot of damage. So yeah, uh, that's Cabrant. So yeah, I got damage rolled there. <clears throat> if you want to, you can not... You can skip the Traveler on the first phase and use it on the second phase instead. 
But the second phase is much less of a damage roll than the first phase is, so I usually I like to uh, use it in the first phase. And if I get innocenced, then I get innocenced. So after the fight, actually during the during the fight, you should turn off the gambits. Also make sure that if innocence happens, you turn the in you if you get damage rolled and you have turned off the gambits, turn the gambits on again. Because otherwise, when you run away from them, uh, the girls will follow you and they will be in range of innocence. So after the fight, um, if you have the reflect gum, if you have the reflect gum out, you don't need to do any dispels. Uh, but if if you don't, like I didn't, uh, Penelo should start by dispelling Ash. Uh, Ash should decoy Bosch, and you need to you need to. Uh, X potion as well. You, or you need to X potion if you got innocenced. And you need to remove the mirror mail and then uh, cast protect and decoy. So I, I should have I should have removed the uh, mirror mail first, but whatever. Anyway, you want to protect decoy and X potion. Gosh. X potion only if you got innocenced. So then wait until, or you can optimize Bosch, or wait until the ref wait until he gets untargeted, and then you want to bring in Vaughn inst instead of him, and then you want Penelo to dispel her. Uh, it doesn't matter in which order Penelo dispels. You can dispel her first or Ash first. It doesn't matter as long as she dispels both of them. And then Ash will cast Decoy on Vaughn. And then you want to turn on Vaughn's gambits and run away from Ash so that Vaughn casts Arrow on himself. And once Arrow starts, you want to turn it off. And then you bring out Fran and you have everyone cast Reflect them on themselves. And if you have the Reflect Gamote, you, just, you can just throw the Reflect Gamote instead of using the Reflects and Dispels. So that's, that's, I think, the best usage of And ref Reflector Mode is the only way to uh, uh, refresh Reflect, because otherwise, if you have Reflect on and you try to refresh it, uh, it will get reflected. So, But modes don't get reflected, so you can just throw Reflect... You can throw Reflect Mode even if you... Uh, have reflect on just you need if you use reflect gamote you have to make sure that all three party members are in the range of the mode and once ash and penelo get untargeted by the reflects take them out of the party it doesn't matter if you ent accidentally enter the fight without them um with, that, with them still in the party, you can just immediately press a triangle and remove them out of the party. So now there's Wayne, and Wayne is very slow, kind of like Hydro. So you can just kite Wayne around, and that's why we, we use Fran here. So uh, we use Fran so that Von, or Bosch's decoy will last longer. And we don't have to refresh it as early as we would otherwise have to need to. So the strat here is to run a forward a little bit, uh, so that so that you still uh, stay out of range of Vayne. And then you bring in Ash and Penelo, and then you turn on Ash and Penelo's gambits. Uh, you should do the you should turn the gambits on in the menu instead of waiting and then turning them on, but uh, I made a mistake there. It's something I came up with very recently, so I haven't really remembered doing it. So a couple of things to know in this fight. Uh, Larsa is here, he's technically on your side, but he's more of an annoyance than uh, helpful, because he's ac he might actually throw X potions at Ash and Penelo, and that's something you really don't want to happen. Um, also, Vayne, 
can use a move called pummel and if pummel happens uh, I think it's technically possible to avoid it but pummel will basically kill a friend and then you have to bring out Bosch uh, when Fran if Fran dies. Either way, the strat is to... Uh, it takes a little bit more than two rounds, or a little bit more than one round to uh, get rid of the first fa first phase of vein one. And... Um, so what you do is you do it a full round, hope that Larsa dies, uh, that's why you move a little bit forward and then bring the girls in so that uh, they are in range of killing Larsa. Larsa can, however, block magics, so it is possible that she survives and uh, explosions anyway. It is pretty rare. But anyway, you kite a uh, vein like you did hy with Hydro, and then once the second Firagas have charged, then you uh, let Vayne catch you by running uh, running at him, and then once Fran dies, you bring in Bosch instead of uh, Fran. And after that, then their cutscene happens. And after cutscene, uh, he will immediately use Mock Wave. So, as you can see, Fire Agas are really close to getting off. And sometimes the Fire Agas, or one of, actually in this case, one of the Fire Agas got off before Mach Wave, which is probably the worst thing that can happen. Um, well, there, there, like there's three scenarios. Uh, you, the most usual scenario is m that Mach Wave happens before any of the Fire Agas. Uh, second most common is that both Fire Agas uh, go off before Mach Wave. And the third, third is this, that one Fyraga goes off before Mach Wave and second goes after. Uh, how people are positioned here is that Ash and Penelo are too far away from each other to get reflects on uh, Vayne. And that's how it's supposed to be. Because uh, you, you need 10 uh, reflects to kill Vayne. And... Um, so you can get four, four Fire Agas the first round and then six on the second round and that will kill Vayne. But uh if but after after the four after five Fire Agas, uh Vayne will use a move called Force of Will, which is AoE and it kills everyone except Bosch. But it kills the girls. So you, we don't want that to happen. So that's why we want four Fire Agas to hit Vayne first. So two each. And then uh, six Fire Agas to finish him off. And... Uh, but yeah, it's a little bit annoying if uh, Vayne... If, it, it's no big deal if, uh, if this happens, but... It's annoying if they get split like that. And the problem with... And the reason why you want, you actually want Vayne to get Mach Wave off before, um, before the Fire Agas, because uh, that that way, wh how, what you can do is you can throw the explosion into the queue, and just run away before the explosion actually goes off. But now, now explosion would go off immediately. But uh, but I see Vayne using Pummel, so that's. That's not that's annoying anyway, and Pummel is annoying because it takes up the whole whole uh, ability queue, so it it wastes a lot of decoy time. That's why Pummel is annoying. But yeah, here four Fireagas landed on Vayne, and now six Fireagas will land from this, and as you can see, Vayne tried to do Force of Will, but it was clocked by the Fireagas and. Uh, Vayne died before the Force of Will happened. So sometimes what happens is... Uh, let, let's go back a little bit. Sometimes after Mach Wave, 
for whatever reason, Vayne ignores decoy and targets one of the girls. And if that happens, uh, you want to switch your leader to that girl. And you want to kite Vayne a little bit. And um, you have the other girl uh, will start kind of like here. You, you have the other girl, like say you were controlling Penelo. You have the other girl start charging. Uh, and then you start charging yourself a little bit later so that the other girl starts first. And then... Um, One, uh, the first, first, the other girl will uh, get to the action first, and then, um, then sh she will push uh, Vane, Vane below the threshold for force of will, before, uh, before. Uh, she reaches Penelo when Penelo starts casting uh, her Fyraga as well, or the other, the girl that Vayne is targeting. It's usually Penelo. But yeah, uh, that sometimes happens. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain without showing, but that's the best I can do. And then there's Vayne Nose. Um. So, they know this is probably the deadliest boss of the run because he has uh, he he his attacks deal for like seven hundred damage each his physical attacks and he can combo and he likes to combo a lot. So if but uh, his attacks can be blocked, so if you have the Ensanguine Shield, definitely use it in this fight. So the fight starts by casting Dispel with Bosch on Vaynovus. And then again you wait until Dispel is about halfway charged. And then you cast Oil. And usually you want to have Ash throw Expotion on... Uh, on Bosch, just in case that, uh, in case Way Novus combos or something. And I ac accidentally had Ash go into action. But yeah, you you want to you want to have Bosch at full HP. Fortunately, Vaynovus sometimes uses spells, and Vaynovus' spells can be reflected, so that's nice. So just keep your HP up, and uh, try to finish the first round off as soon as possible. There are all these Sephiroths right flying around, and uh, as reflects will always reflect to the closest person, or closest enemy. Uh, they sometimes interrupt you so that they will be the closest enemy instead because they fly around and they constantly are hitting Bosch. So it's a little bit annoying, but uh, just try to hug Vaynovus as much as you can so that all the with all like all the all the characters need to be hugging Vaynovus. And then uh, you reach this cutscene. Um, it's usually only like one round after you get Dispel and Oil on him. So after this, what will happen is Vaynovus will uh, first... He, he will start going towards the middle. Then he will uh, use a move called Azure Vortis that heals him a little bit. And after Azure Vortis, uh, he will use a move called Ascension. Or no, sorry, not Ascension. Uh, inviolable Will. And after Inviolable Will, he will use... Uh, what's it called? A magic Barrier. But, Magic Barrier... There's like a weird thing about Venosis AI. Uh, which makes Magic Barrier skippable. 
And how you do it is by letting a character die to inviolable will or by having them kill and miss or and skip inviolable will altogether. So that's what we're going to do. So uh, but first we need to uh, equip Viking coat on Bosch, not because they are using uh, water any water water stuff, even though Wayne knows can use uh, water ga, but you have mirror mail would deal with that as well. But because you need to recast decoy here, and the uh, Sephira are still hitting you, so uh, you want some kind of armor on, even if it's not the mirror mail. So Bash will cast Dispel on Veinovus again, because he will get all his buffs back. And once it's halfway charged, then tell Ash to cast this Decoy on Bosch, and uh, Penelo cast Oil on Novus. And as you can see, Bosch's Decoy has already worn off. And as you can see, they still deal quite a bit of damage, even with the Viking Coat on. And uh, once you see the word oil on Vein Novus, you can open the menu and remove, rem take out everyone from your, from the party and bring out Vaan. So now uh, Vein Novus is ready as a reward this. So what you do is you turn on at Vaan's gambits, wait for as a reward this to finish, then um, have Vaan arrow himself. And then wait. Do not instantly open the menu and bring out the party members. But uh, you have to wait a little bit. I usually, my cue is that I wait until the damage number that Vaan uh, deals on himself, it vanishes. And then I bring out the party and that will skip the magic barrier for some reason. If, if you take out him out immediately, uh, sometimes magic barrier will still get skipped, but sometimes he will use magic barrier. And uh, in that case, it's really annoying because you have to wait for the ma magic barrier will last for two minutes and you have to wait for it to be over and you can damage him and your decoy will run out and it will be a huge pain. Either way, after, after you have skipped our inviolable will and... Uh, And what's it called? A uh, magic barrier. Then you bring out everyone. And at this point, they know us will die if uh, you one with one round of uh, Fyragas and one round of Fyras. And so you have the gambits on. Uh, keep Bosch's HP up. Uh, they know us at this point will be only casting spells on you and they will all be reflected. So that's so that's nice, but you you want to be ATB reset, resetting all your expotions. And uh, after you after the fire gas go into action, they tell both girls to manually cast fire ass on yourself, so that uh, uh, so that the fire ass will still go off, and not get ATB clogged by the. Uh, like, because when Novus is casting Blissaga, uh, Blissaga takes up 4 of the ability queue, or the effect capacity, and uh, Fyragas also take 4, and you, ca you can only have, uh, you can only have 8 at the same time, so Blissaga and you, with Blissaga you could only have 1 Fyraga, but because Fyra is only 2, then you can have two fire ass and a blizzaga at the same time. And that's Vein Novus. And if Bosch dies at Vein Novus, then you really it's it's gonna be a rough fight. Uh, you the most important thing is to get decoy back on Bosch as soon as possible. And then uh, you would you would just recover as as you can, like it's it's rough. Uh, vein vein is an easy recovery. It's much easier recovery because uh, uh, because vein is so slow. You can just run away from him, and he will never catch you. 
So if you have to recover at Vayne, make sure you are in full fighting condition. But if Vayne Novus, if you have to recover at Vayne Novus and you're very close to killing him, then you just have to focus on... Uh, well, the second phase of Vayne Novus is not too hard to uh, recover at either. But just know that uh, Vayne Novus will... Uh, if, if you take too long, Veinovus will start using some really bad moves like uh, Tree of Sephira, which is another FMV move. Either way, there are two cutscene skips between Veinovus and Undying. So Undying can't be oiled, so you will only dispel him, and you will dispel him with Penelo. And uh, then you will have Ash cast Decoy on Bosch. Now, I have a theory that um, if, if um, everyone in your party is reflected, they knows will not use any of his piercing spells. Uh, I have only recently came up with this theory, so I'm not sure if it's true. Uh, but that's, that's something that could explain why we see piercing spells at certain times, and why sometimes we don't. And uh, so what you want to do is, after Bosch gets targeted, take all, switch your, um, switch your, um, ah, switch your armor to a Viking coat. And again, in this fight, you can uh, block, so, you can block uh, Vayne Novus' uh, spells, so if you have the Ensanguine Shield, or not spells, but uh, attacks. Uh, so uh, put on the Ensanguine Shield if you have it. So there's a decoy and use an X-Potion. And as soon as the X-Potion lands, uh, put the Mirror Mail back on. And then turn off Ash and Penelope's Gambit so that they get close to you. And again, you can see here how Ash was here first. So I first turned on only Ash's Gambits. And then Penelope showed up later, so I turned her Gambits on. Uh, and then you want to expo you want to keep you need to keep Bosch's HP high. So just keep using Expotions. And at this point, you don't need to check boots anymore. So you can do the ATB resets by re Remove all and optimize, which is slightly faster than what I did there. Um, and there was a nice block. And after a couple of Fyraga, after a couple of uh, rounds of Fyraga, he will typically use, or he will use, he will always use Mega Flare. And Mega Flare is. Um, Mega Flare is AoE, uh, so you have to, but it gets clogged by the Fyragas or X Potion because it requires the full uh, ability queue. So keep your gambits on and with Bosch, run away from the girls as far as you can. And as soon as the Mega Flare animation starts, turn off Ash and Penelope's gambits and go back, go, go back next to uh, Undying and Heal Bosch up and turn on Gambits. And at that, if you do everything correctly by this point, this should be Chi Chi. Uh, yeah, ba Bosch gets hit once, but then after that, uh, Undying starts using stuff that will not damage. So after the next round of Fire Ragas, just uh, throw a Phoenix down on Vaughn. And then um, what you can do, what I'm doing here is Undying is Undying is moving constantly around the battlefield. So uh, you can have Penelo or you can control one of the mages and uh, push the other one. Uh, so you can, you keep close to Undying. And... Um, and Bosch, uh, who doesn't have gambits on, will fall. Will just follow you. So have everything. 
ha uh, do Fyragas until you see Undying cast Magic Barrier. When you see the, the text, the Undying ready is Magic Barrier, turn off Gambits. Uh, and wait for wait for them to get untargeted. Then bring out Vaughn, because Undying will now use uh, Ascension and tur turn on Vaughn's Gambits. Uh, Vaughn will use Arrow on himself to skip Ascension. As soon as Vaughn dies, you can uh, bring out everyone, turn on Ash and Penelope's Gambits, and then uh, you should kill Undying before... Before um, he does anything. So if you don't kill it here, he'll kill him here. Uh, after Enrage, he will use um, he will use uh, what's it called? Uh, for no, not yeah, Force Barrier, and after Force Barrier, he will use Giga Flare Sword. So. You have two more. You have two more uh, rounds of Fireaga. You can get in before Undying does anything that can hurt you. Uh, it is possible that if, say, if Vayne Novus used a lot of Water Ga and Vayne used a lot of Pummels, or in other in other ways, you were just too slow. Um, the reflects of the girls might run out during undying fight, so that would take up one, uh, fire, one fire aga cast if it wears off in, uh, if it wears off like during this, uh, end part. And um, so if you and if if that happens and if you miss a lot of fire agas, you might not be you might not be able to kill Undying before uh, before uh, Giga Flare Sword. But uh, if you did everything correctly, you should be. But uh, that's just to say that you have to be careful that you're always close enough to Undying that uh, you will be able to kill him before the Giga Flare Sword. Uh, if Giga Flare, Giga Flare Sword happens, then the fight is pretty much over. You you just Giga Flare Sword just kills everyone. You can take everyone out of the party, and uh, and have someone else tank the Giga Flare Sword. But um, Ash and but uh, you only have one. You have you only have one chance to hit Undying with anything before he uses perfect defense and even so i i think you can you might be able to get uh maybe two fire agas off before like two not not two fire aga casts but two fire aga like reflects before he uses perfect defense if even that so even if you manage to skip giga flare it means it means that um uh, like if he, if he when he ready is Giga Flare Sword, you need to you need to kill it before that Giga Flare Sword because otherwise you are not going to kill it because if you can't skip Giga Flare you can't take the girls out of the party if you're if you are um if you are using if you are fire going before for Giga Flare Sword so uh you just have to hope. Like if if you get to Giga Flare Sword, there's usually not much you can do. You can try to wait out the perfect defense, but at that point, uh, Undying starts to using stuff like Piercing Holy, and uh, Piercing Holy will one shot Bosh from full HP. So uh, you can try to hang on and try to wait out the uh, two minutes that the perfect defense lasts. But the chances are that you are going to die. But um, so if if possible, try to beat a uh, Giga Flare Sword, and um, if if you um, if you are not in the full battle shape when uh, when Undying uses Chain Magic, or start you start, starts this sequence where he first uses Chain Magic then uh, faith, then magic barrier, 
then Ascension, then Enrage, then uh, Force Barrier, and then Giga Flare Sword. If you if before the Chain Magic part, so after if after Mega Flare, um, both girls like let's say the girls get hit by the Mega Flare and die. Uh, if that happens, you need to be on full battle shape uh, before you uh start hitting start dealing any damage to undying so the girls need to be back on uh they need to be reflected they need to be in critical health and ba well bosh doesn't need to be decoyed in this fight um uh, but you need only need decoy to last until mega flare because undying always targets uh the closest person except with mega flare so for Mega Flare you need decoy, but after after Mega Flare you don't need to re-decoy anymore. You, you just have to make sure that Bosch stays closest, and he will not do anything to you after he uses Chain Magic, as long as you have the damage to kill him. So, yeah, uh, I think uh, there there is still Piercing Magic. If piercing magic happens, uh, you need to revive the girls and recrit them by having them hit themselves uh, with the staves and have them re reflect them, them having them re -re, re reflect themselves. Also, if Ash is out of MP after they Nova's fight, uh, tell her manually to use Fire Ash uh, because uh, she and. If she uses Fire Ash, she will get enough MP to eventually cast Fire Aga. And in this fight, you deal, you have the boost in, you have the missed boost for reco MP recovery. So uh, you will get, you will get, uh, <clears throat> you will get uh, enough, you will get more MP back from Fire Aga than you will use. Uh, then, you, then the Fire Aga costs, so you will be gaining MP instead of losing. I guess I should be, I should say say some general stuff still uh, about eaters. Uh, if you if you have three eaters or if you have more than four elixirs, you don't need the eater for. Um, you don't need the eater for. Uh, brain pants, and if that happens, then either eaters can eaters can be used as uh, whenever someone's out of MP. Um, most notable places where eaters can be used are Ariman, uh, Sid One if it goes wrong, uh, some, and um, I guess the final bosses sometimes. Sometimes if things go wrong in final bosses, Ash will run out of MP. Uh, so you can use Eaters here. So, but yeah, uh, you and it, Eaters are preferred over Elixirs for MP recovery for the girls, because Elixirs will also recover your HP. Um, so that they will bring uh, the girls out of the critical HP. And one thing about the elixirs as well is that if you have more than four elixirs, so say you have five, I think the maximum you you can have with the route is seven, or I guess eight if you have the if you count the chest in Pharos. But if you if you have all the if you if you have more than four elixirs, so more than you need at the brain pants, uh, the rest of the elixirs can be used as as uh, with the same effect as Expotions, uh, just to heal Bosch. So, I think that concludes this uh, tutorial series or world record analysis series. Uh, so if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, on If you're on YouTube, you can ask, uh, ask questions in the comment section. Um, and uh, I'm happy to answer them. Any questions you might have about uh, the run? 
if you want to if you want to see this all in full speed or in normal speed um you can watch i you can watch my uh wealth record video which is on youtube already um and if and i think that's everything so thanks for watching everyone and have a great day